Good morning. Robin asked me to speak about my spiritual journey to this church for Veterans Day. And since we can do hard things, and you can't say no to Robin, <laughs> despite not knowing what I was going to find, I said yes. Talking about your, uh, the psalmist and the app, nothing brings home your mortality more than at 18 being told to fill out a will. I wasn't sure when, what I'd find when I'd start looking in my heart and head. I was raised Christian, United Methodist, right here in Massachusetts. Stereotypical little white New England church, mostly older congregation. It was okay, didn't hate it, didn't love it. As I grew up, it didn't take long for dissatisfaction to manifest and, and I fell away from it. Overall, I think my formative years in the church didn't really do a whole lot for me except for ruining my Sundays, and I didn't get to sleep in, with the one exception being meeting my wife in youth group. I think that was the greatest thing to ever happen to me in church. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't get forced to say that. Around the time the first Gulf War was ending, I joined the Ar Massachusetts Army National Guard. I had so much fun that I decided I wanted to go on active duty. That and my life was a mess and I had no direction, but that's sort of aside. While on active duty, I was encouraged to join other Christian service people in fellowship, groups, trips, and worship. I gave it a try. I joined a young adult fellowship group that was all other service people and led by a retired army chaplain and his wife. I went on a retreat. I went to a Promise Keepers event. I kept finding myself surrounded by people who generally cited Christ but acted in ways unlike Christ and made me wonder about their ideas, what they thought of the guy who was the namesake of their religion. So over the years, I tended to identify less and less with the larger group that proclaimed, I'm a Christian. Hypocrisy is a big turnoff, and I fell away from this life again. Some years later, I spent 15 months in Baghdad, Iraq. If I had anything spiritual left then, that deployment killed it. When your unit suffers a loss, you don't have the luxury of grieving. The mission goes on. You stuff and stuff everything down deep. And then people wonder why military folks, even those who weren't necessarily the ones engaged in direct action with the enemy, come back so affected by war. I have stories and situations which might not necessarily be the ones that you think of when someone says war, but which are the ones that radically change people. You're not the same person afterwards. You can't be the same person afterwards and stay whole. It's a lot to carry. And everyone finds different ways of coping. Over the next nine years after that, till my retirement, if my soul was filled with anything, it wasn't spiritual wonder. It was anger, resentment. Felt like I was in a hole and I couldn't get out of it alone. I knew that isolating myself was unhealthy. I know that I hate asking for help. I know that a community can make you stronger. I knew all of these things because I'm intelligent and self-aware. And coincidentally, my wife Sarah told me. <laughs> but knowing something intellectually and actually being able to do something about it are two different things. Cut to last year, my wife, Again, I seem to mention you a lot in my life journey. <laughs> who had started coming here first, and who has never given up on me, despite me doing my unconscious best to push her away, said, I think you'd like this church. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think the ministers of our tribe, she brought a donkey for Palm Sunday. <laughs> <clears throat> to the church? In the church. So I came. 
with no or low expectations of what I'd find or how I'd feel about it. I needed a community, so I came, and I found it. A community of people who believe in love, helping others outside the church and each other inside the church. A place in a congregation that were welcoming and accepting. And nowhere was that exemplified more than in the awesome welcome message, which the first time I heard it, I had to keep looking at my wife saying, do you hear this? Is this for real? It is for real. And the people here as well are real. And I'm not, ever, not sure I've ever experienced this feeling of being surrounded by as much genuine love and commitment as I, as I do when I'm here. I know that when I come here, I'm safe. I'm accepted. And I have such confidence in the leadership team to steer this ship in the right direction. And the congregation to hold them accountable. So in summation, Thanks for letting me be a part of this awesome thing you have, and I hope I can also be an asset in helping it keep the momentum that it has.